Let's give the Lord a hand because he won't fail. Generations after generations after generations of people that have been hurt and broken and hopeless. Sinners that have been bound, depressed, forgotten, rejected, have called on Jesus. And they found out he's the one thing that's consistent that will never fail. People will fail you. You'll fail yourself. Your husband, your wife might fail you. But Jesus will never fail you. He loves you. There's, there, there's a story in the Bible about a lady that failed herself. And how she did that, she committed adultery. And no one grows up and say, I just want to be an adulterer. My goal is I just want to be a cheat. But the reality is you could get so involved in your pursuit of trying to be happy and, and trying to fit in and trying to medicate your own pain that you could find yourself going deeper in sin than you ever thought you would go. When you said the vows, you meant them. No one says those vows and says, I don't, I'm not meaning it. I'm just, tr I'm trying to trick you. It's not that. The idea is that sin will take you farther than you ever thought you'd ever go. It's a reality. So this lady found herself in an adulterous relationship. But not only was she found herself in an adulterous relationship, she was caught in the very act. Some religious leaders of the day were keeping an eye on her. And maybe they were suspicious I think she's going out on her husband. I think so. Let's watch her. And they watched her. And I don't know how it works in those days. But they watched her getting into that tent with somebody that wasn't her husband. And I don't know if they peeked or what, but they caught her in the very act. It was the first peep show. And then, and I want you to understand this, that the, the, the penalty for adultery back in those days was death. It, it was actually defined stoning. So they brought the religious leaders, had legal right to stone her, and they brought her to Jesus. And when they brought her to Jesus, they began to say, we caught her in the very act of adultery. We know we could stone her. What do you think? What do you say? And Jesus really didn't answer with words at the beginning. The scripture says he just started writing in the ground. We don't know what he was writing, but maybe he was writing, he could have been writing the men that were there accusing her with stones. And maybe he was writing down their sins. Like, you, you, you want to accuse her? Let me, let's focus on you a little bit. And then he, then he looks up and he says, and you know what this all means? that this is the reality. Every single one of us are in the same boat. We're sinners that need to be saved, that need to repent of our sins, need to be forgiven. That's, that's it. There's no special categories like sinner. That's the category you're in. They need a savior. And without Jesus, you're doomed. That's it, right? That's the category. So Jesus says, okay, let's do this. Let's stone her. But there's a problem. He without sin cast the first stone though. And the Bible said from oldest to youngest, they just started dropping their stones. I said, we got to go. I got sin, man. He wrote it down right there. We just seen it. Maybe that's what happened. He knows. And God knows. And then he told the adulterous woman, I know you've messed up. I don't know you've sinned. But where are your accusers at? And, and, then, and, then G, and then she says, they're gone. He goes, and I love what Jesus said. He goes, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more, baby. Come on, I set you free from that lie, so I'll make you whole. There's a key here, though. He didn't say continue in your adultery. He says, stop that lifestyle and don't go there anymore. I give you the power to overcome. Come on, your pain, your hurt, your addiction. Let's give the Lord a hand that God not only forgives your sin, he can save you from it 
He could deliver you from it and then give you the power to live a holy, dedicated life above, come on, above the societies, come on, levels of what they think are moral and values. One more hand to the Lord. He's a God that wants to save you. I'm so grateful for every one of you that are here tonight. And one of the things that's not popular today is to talk about sin and repentance. We love talking about the grace of God, like God's so graceful, merciful, and he is. But Jesus came, Jesus came to pay the price for the penalty of sin. Sin is so serious, so serious that God had to send his perfect son to suffer and die for it. I, and I think we're, we're developing as a society, even as a church, that we take for granted the blood of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made for our sins so we could be forgiven. You understand that? God has not changed. And we're going to be talking about these last days, continue talking about these last days. And the subject tonight, and we're going to continue talking about the subject of homosexuality again and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick on it until I cover everything. And the reason I'm going to stick on it until I cover everything, because I want you to understand verse by verse what God says about the subject. I don't want you guessing. I don't want our church guessing. I, wanna know, I want you to know this is what the Bible says about the last days. But today we're going to be covering this. A great rejection of God and a rise in homosexuality. The great rejection of God is called, the sign number eight is called the apostasy or the great falling away. That before Jesus would come back the second time, that there would be a great falling away or walking away from God and his word. That the society of that day would be massively ungodly and more, un more massively ungodly and would actually be more in agreement with the devil or the Antichrist than God. We're going to cover that today. And we're going to say, well, tie it in. Well, how does homosexuality have anything to do with the great falling away? I'm going to show you what the Bible says about it. And then you can determine what you want to do with what the Bible says. Now, either we believe this word and adjust our lives to the word, which is called repentance, or we reject the word. But understand, rejecting the word and rejecting the good news leaves, leaves us in a miserable place, doomed, stuck, and you'll never fulfill your purpose. You could find, try to find your purpose in your sin, but what you're going to find in your sin is emptiness. You're going to find abuse. You're going to find hurt. You're going to find emptiness. You're going to find depression. There's someone today that God is saying, I'll set you free from your depression. I'll set you free from your addiction. I'll set you free from a suicidal spirit if you're willing to repent of your sins. Give God some praise that there's an answer, but we must repent of our sins. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word that leads us and directs us to all truth. We know one day we're going to die and then we have judgment. And we also know that you're coming back soon. And those that are ready will be caught up in the air with you. And those that are not ready will be left behind to go into the, the seven-year tribulation where judgment on sin begins. So we just thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, use me, speak through me. Help us, Father, to put our guards down and just hear your word. That will not be, we'll have an open mind. That will not be closed-minded. I come against every spirit of rebellion, misinterpretation, resistant of the word of God. I bind you. I rebuke you. I cast you out. I bring down every stronghold of deception right now in this atmosphere, every stronghold of offense in the name of Jesus. I bind you. Our weapons are mighty for pulling down strongholds. I pull down every stronghold of the enemy right now, which is arguments against the word of God. We take every thought captive and make it obey God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and be seated. I, I have a a, a, an assignment here and, and the title is still a great rejection of God and the rise of homosexuality. 
I want to review just a little bit, and I hope I just don't get caught up in the review. I'll do my best to get through it as fast as I can. So why discuss the, re uh, the great rejection of God and homosexuality? This is review. Because we care about them. Them are all groups of people. And 1 Philippians 2.4 says, care about them. Care about them as much as you care about yourself. It's not okay for you to be in this room saved and not care about another group that's not saved. The highest form of hate is indifference and contempt. I'm going to introduce you to the word contempt. Say it with me, contempt. Contempt means this. is the feeling that a person is beneath consideration or worthless to completely disregard. Someone's worthless. Contempt means I think they're worthless. I, I don't regard them. I don't need to consider them. That's the highest form of hate. We as believers love every segment of our society, including the homosexuals. Amen. Come on. The most loving thing that we can do is share the good news of Jesus with people. That there's salvation. That there's eternal life. Remind them what Christ has done for them. That they can be born again and have a new life and get a new heart and have new desires. That they can be restored. It's the most loving thing we could do. So why discuss the great rejection of God and homosexuality? Number two, this is a review. Because the LGBTQ community is hurting. Stats show that the homosexual community is depressed and suicidal. LGBTQ youth, and we have many youth in here and watching online, are more than twice as likely to feel suicidal and more than four times as likely to attempt suicide than heterosexual youth. They're depressed. They're suicidal. So there's a group that's depressed and suicidal, and we're just going to walk by, and we have the answer? I'm going to say something. Someone accepting your homosexuality will not take away your depression and your suicidal thoughts. Because the depression and suicidal thoughts are a byproduct of a lifestyle. God wants you to have joy from the inside out, not from the outside in. If you actually think joy comes from the outside in, you'll be chasing your tail like a dog. The joy that God gives is from within. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding that I receive when I receive Jesus. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have this joy. And you'll never be set free from depression or suicidal thoughts. The homosexual community, LGBT community is hurting. Homosexual community, the homosexual community is also experiencing health issues that have and presently plague their community more than others. In 2019, there were 587,000, almost 600,000 gay and bisexual men living with HIV, representing 56% of all the people living with HIV. This is a significant number because the homosexual community only represents 2 to 4% of the population. So the majority of those that have HIV v come from the homosexual community. Last week, this is the set last week, monkeypox, a new pandemic. Tests have shown that 99% of those infected are homosexuals. Fauci, who's Dr. Fauci? We all know who Dr. Fauci is. Chief medical advisor to the president of the United States said this. Right now, it's focused, monkeypox is focused because it's 99% of among men who have sex with men. So we've got to reach out to that community, particularly men who have sex with men. Get rid of anything that even smacks a little bit of stigma and make sure we reach out to them. So... 
Even Dr. Fauci knows that we need to reach out to them. Not only are they experiencing emotional pain and hurt and depression, but they're also experiencing even health issues that don't literally hit other segments of society at the level it hits them. The third reason that we're covering this subject is because we desire for the LGBTQ community to be saved and have eternal life. We're the only ones that could talk about the subject because we're the only ones that could bring salvation, eternal life. We're the only ones that could set, come on, a captive free. We're the only ones that could give someone a new identity and give them a new nature and give them a new desire through the power of Jesus Christ. For us not to talk about it is because we don't care. I care. And I believe our church is right now crossing over to a place where God's going to use this church the way we're allowed to reach to give hope to the LGBTQ community and we're going to have testimonies, come on, thousands of testimonies of people that have been saved, set free and they're going to say, I used to be sick, I used to be suicidal, I used to be depressed, but then I called on the name of Jesus and he saved me, he set me free and he made me whole. We, everyone needs to be saved, including the homosexual. There's no special categories. All of us are sinners and we need to be saved. In Romans 10, 13, it says, for everyone who calls on, on the name of the Lord will be saved. They'll be rescued. They'll be saved from danger and destruction, from suffering, from judgment. They'll be made whole. They'll be restored to health. They'll be healed from disease. I believe that there's going to be revival. Come on, I believe there's going to be a revival in these last days where, where, come on, those in the LGBTQ community, homosexuals, are going to come here and not only be saved, they're going to be healed too. Everyone who calls, Matthew 10, 13, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on, them, call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? So you mean the church is not going to mention Jesus? And not let this part of the community? Let, we'll reach out to everybody. We'll reach out to the gangbanger. We'll reach out to the alcoholic. We'll reach out to those who are suicidal. We'll reach out to the liar, the thief, the prisoner, the criminal. The, we'll reach out to all of them, but we won't reach out to the homosexual community. God forbid that we as a church back down or get intimidated when God wants to reach every single person, everyone he wants to save. Save. How can the believe never heard about it? I talked to someone in our church that he's a, he's a born again ex homosexual. And he said this He goes, Pastor Marco, I appreciate you talking about the subject because I grew up in church and it was not mentioned from the pulpit. So I'd go for prayer, and this is what I pray for. I want freedom from my, I want healing from my depression. I feel suicidal. I'm full of anxiety. But I would never mention forgiveness for my homosexuality. He goes, and the reason I never said it, because I felt it was a taboo subject. If the church didn't want to talk about it, why should I? This is a safe place. This is a safe place where we can confess all our sins and all we're going to receive. Come on, we're going to receive love. We're going to receive forgiveness. We're going to receive eternal life. Everyone who does and practices wrong, everyone who does and practices wrong 
will not inherit the kingdom of God, including the homosexual. Homosexuality is not in a different category than all other sins. We tell all groups of people to repent. The thief, the adulterer, the addict, the prostitute, the murderer, the liar, and also the homosexual. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, look at this scripture. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Have you, have you settled this? That if you're doing wrong and practicing wrong without repenting of it, you absolutely, 100% will not go to heaven and you will not have access to the blessings of the kingdom of God? That you're going to be left on the out now and for eternity? Even though there's salvation for you, there's joy for you, there's freedom for you, there's new beginnings for you. But you'll be on the out, not because of your sin, is that you refuse to stop doing it. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? And that's, I'm going to say this, absolute statement. Will not. Don't fool yourselves. What are we saying? Don't what? You know why it's saying don't fool yourselves? Because we're really good at fooling ourselves. We're really good at justifying that what we're doing is not wrong. And we'll even twist scripture to match up with our lifestyle. Look at this. Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin. Homosexuality is sexual sin, but so is fornication, and so is adultery. So don't think that we're talking about just a homosexual. They're just one category of sinner. But God is saying, if you're right now, right now watching porn, the Bible says, if you look upon a woman lustfully, you've already committed adultery in your mind. And God's concerned about your mind, not just your body. If you're sleeping around and, and, and calling yourself a Christian, stop fooling yourself. Don't fool yourself because you ain't going to heaven practicing any type of sexual sin. You ain't going to make it. Or who worship idols. So, Pastor, I don't worship no idols. You sure? Are you sure you're not worshiping no idols? Because I guarantee you this, if there's sexual morality, there's a lot of idol worship. And you know what idol worship is? It's creating a God that matches up with your lifestyle. See, when you're an idol worshiper, you say stuff like this, my God wouldn't send somebody to hell. Where would you get that from? Your God? Where, what God is that? That's an idol you created. Hmm. Let's get a little bit quiet, but that's all right. I think we're listening. Those who commit adultery. There's no category of a Christian adulterer. You're a sinner. And if you don't repent of your adultery, you stay under the category of sinner. Don't fool yourself. You're not going to heaven. We got crazy stuff happening. There's couples that you're committing adultery by watching porn together. It's literally like bringing other couples into your bed. And if you watch enough porn... You'll bring another couple into your bed. Oh, Lord, I didn't want to talk about this, but I got to. If you're an adulterer, hey, bro, you're in, a, you're in a category of sin that most people in this room already been in a category because you lusted after a woman, you already committed adultery. All God is saying, repent of it. 
admit it's a sin and say, God, forgive me and set me free and go back home to your wife or your husband. Or male prostitutes or female prostitutes. Don't fool yourself. You can't be a Christian prostitute. After church, I'm just going to do a few tricks so I get my tithes and offers for Sunday. Okay? What? Well, pastor, we're talking about, what I'm talking about, you could fool yourself into thinking that you're stripping at the club and you're still a Christian. You could fool yourself into thinking that when you need money, you sleep with a, with a friend for a little, you know, a friends with benefits and think you're practicing Christianity. That's, that's prostitution. Okay. Male prostitutes. Look now, now it says, or practice homosexuality. So it says, don't fool yourself, those who are male prostitutes, and right next to it, practice homosexuality. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you'll enter the kingdom of heaven because you won't. And the reason I'm covering this, even if you're online, I'm not here to put anybody down. We're all in the same mess. He without sin cast the first stone. I can't cast the stone, but I know there's one that died for me and set me free so I could be a new person, be forgiven, and receive the gift of eternal life. I know it's hard. But who said serving God was going to be easy? Do you know someone's strung out on heroin? It's hard to quit. But we don't tell them, hey, bro, you know, you know what's your identity? Heroin addict? That's cool. That's how God made you. No, we say, bro, if you continue shooting up, you could overdose. You could die. You're going to end up in prison. And, the, and at the end, if you don't, can, if you don't stop doing this, you could end up in hell forever. So why don't we say that about homosexuality too? The Bible says it. Now understand when it says those who practice homosexuality, the word practice is the key. That means you could feel like, man, I was born a homosexual. If you have, I have desires, just because you have a desire to sin doesn't mean you need to live it out. There's a day in your life that you're going to pick up your cross and you just got to crucify that desire. And for the rest of my life, if I have to stay celibate, I'll stay celibate to please God rather than my flesh. And I'll fulfill God's purpose and I'll depend on the love of God. Come on, the peace of God and the strength of God to get me through. I'm sold out for Jesus. You can't say you're sold out to Jesus until you're willing to crucify your favorite sin. Our thieves. Like, bro, stop stealing. You're a klepto, bro. I can't even leave spare change around the house because I know if you're coming in, you're like a vacuum, homie. We'll tell thieves to stop stealing. Greedy people, stop being greedy. Drunkards, stop being a drunk. Or abusive, stop being abusive. Or cheat people. Look what it says. None of these, including the practice of homosexual, will inherit the kingdom of God. Absolute statement. Absolute statement. Well, I don't believe the Bible says it. Well, do you believe this? Well, I don't, if the Bible really say that? I just read it to you. Well, that's your interpretation. How other, how can you reinterpret this in a, another way? Unless you don't want to accept it, that's another thing. But just be honest, I don't want to accept it. If you don't want to repent of your sin, it's okay. Admit it's a sin at least. 
Because you have a chance later on to get saved. Because you cannot be saved for a sin that you're not willing to repent of and admit it's a sin. Absolute statement. Look at this. Verse 11. Some of you were like, once like that. Some of you were what? Once what? You, you were an ex. You were an ex-fornicator. You were an ex-adulterer. You were an ex-idol worshiper. You were an ex-prostitute. You were an ex-thief. You were an ex-drunk. You were an ex-abuser. And some of you were ex-homosexuals. The good news is, is that you can become an ex. Give God some praise that you can become an ex. I used to be... But then I had an encounter with Jesus Christ and he made me something new. I am now an ex. Some of you were once like that. I, I tell you this. We're not living in a, right now we're not, this, this message I'm speaking is not really being speaking on any pulpit across America. I, I don't know anybody's talking about it. And all I'm saying, if, because we're not talking about it, why aren't we talking about it? You know why we don't talk about it? I'll tell you why we don't talk about it. We just really don't care. Or maybe we're trying to be a progressive church that people like us because we're bringing a message that doesn't convict them of sin. And understand this, if there's no conviction of sin, no one can get saved in your church, homie. <laughs> homie preacher. You know what that means, preacher? You're a people pleaser, not a God pleaser. I love this. You used to be that. You used to be an ex, but. Someone say, but. You were cleansed. Come on, I used to be that. I was down. I, I was down and dirty. I was a liar. I was a thief. You couldn't trust me with your mama. I just take her out too. But something happened when I accepted Jesus. I was a pervert. But then something came in. Then I was cleansed. Then I was made holy. Then I was made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. I became an ex. I love it. This is part one of part three. But I'm going to end it with this since I ran out of time. Next week, we're going to go deeper into end times and the great rejection of God. We say, Has there been a great rejection? We're going to cover that next week. But think about this. If we don't preach it, the whole Bible, not take pieces out of it that aren't socially acceptable. We are not politicians. My responsibility as a pastor is to prepare you for eternity. My, my number one responsibility is not to just be a friend. But there's no greater love that someone has than to lay down his life. I understand there could be a lot of kickback on this subject and you might hate me online, but I'm going to tell you this. There's nobody that loves you more on earth than the church of Jesus Christ. We love you and we're concerned about your eternity and we're concerned about your present pain and hurt and suffering. But let's look at eternity. Someone is going to end up in the lake of fire for eternity. And they might ask this. So you knew that I could end up here burning, separate from God, and you said nothing because you didn't want to hurt my feelings? What kind of friend and family are you? What kind of mama and daddy are you? 
So you are keeping me away from the truth and you didn't give me an opportunity to repent and be saved. You're not a friend. You are my greatest enemy. Because you had an answer and you did nothing. Society determine your values, not the word of God. And if you're a person that's more Democrat or Republican than you are Christian, you're in trouble. Because you do not get your, come on, you do not get your morals from your political party. You get your morals from the word of God. Come on, you got to stop aligning yourself with just a political party and start aligning yourself with the word. You vote values. You vote morals. You vote Bible. And the candidate that lines up most with the word is the one you vote for. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, we're in the last days. We got to know what we believe. Let's all stand up. Next week, I'm gonna get, it's going to get gooder. We're going to talk about the great falling away next week. We're going to go deeper into this subject next week. going to be powerful. And the week after that, God willing, we're going to attack the subject of abortion. And what does the Bible say about that? When is it actually a life? We're going to cover that too. You're going to be surprised when it becomes a life. You don't even know. Okay, we're going to get into that in a few weeks. Understand this. There's no opinion here. I'm not reading you opinion. I'm reading the word of God. That's all I'm doing. Come on, how many receive it from God? Christian, why don't you come up here and close this out? Come on, let's give Christian a hand. Come on, he's done a great job. This Sunday, we're going to dismiss it in just a second. This Sunday, you don't, come on, you got to keep coming to church. How many want to grow? The more you hear, the more you believe. Come on. The more you hear, the more you believe. The more you hear, the more you believe. And right now, you might have heard this for the first time, and it's like, whoa. Like, wow. It's okay. God loves you. And I love you. I'll put myself on the line. I'm willing to be persecuted. I'm willing to be talked about. But I'm going to be your greatest friend. And I pray... One day we're all in the heaven and say, Pastor, when you told me that, you heard my feelings, but you were right. I called on Jesus and I'm here. Thank you for being, thank you for having a church that loved me enough to tell me the truth. We're going to give an opportunity for us to give our lives to Jesus. And I'll tell you this, you cannot come to Jesus without two things, two turns. You got to turn from your sin, that's called repentance, and to turn to God through faith in Jesus Christ and that's how you're saved. No other way. You got to confess your sins, that what you're doing is a sin, and then God will forgive you, cleanse you, and give you eternal life. Don't resist what God wants to do in your life. If you're willing to lose your life right now, your, your identity you have now, you could get a new identity, and you could have a new life. It's up to you. Come on. Your greatest identity is that you belong to the Lord, and he's your father, and he wants to be your child. Pastor Christian, close this out tonight. How many received the word tonight? Come on, how many received that? Can we give God a hand for the word we just received tonight? You know, this, this message, just so you know, is, has to be treated very carefully. I know Pastor Marco goes before the Lord and dives into what Scripture says about everything. And the reason why is because the most loving thing we can do as a church is preach the message as clearly as possible. The one message, the one result, the one action step we can take from this is to respond and to turn to God. There were a lot of things that were mentioned tonight. And I believe that tonight what we're producing are ex-drunkards, ex-cheaters, X lifestyles that we used to walk into. And tonight we're saying, I want to be an X in the world and I want to live for God. The Bible says we're all in the same boat. We've all sinned. We all at one point or even now are a part of that list. 
And because of that, there's a price. And the price for the sin that we've committed, even one sin we've committed, is death, which is eternal separation from God. In other words, that's hell forever. Hell was a place not designed for you. It was designed for the enemy. But when we choose to follow the enemy, we follow him there. When God is saying, I know that price is on you, but because I love you so much, I love you this much, I'll pay the price. Jesus saying, I'll do it. The price that you owe, I'm going to pay it. The debt that you can only pay by going to hell forever, I'm willing to step in and pay that price for you because I love you that much. I'm going to wipe your debt away. That's something only Jesus could do because Jesus lived the perfect life and he poured it all out for you on the cross. He gave everything for you. So what can I do to receive that? What can I do to inherit eternal life? What can I do to be saved? Do I have to be better? Do I have to be more good? Do I have to do things right? All it takes is just putting your faith in Jesus. Putting your faith in what he has already done for you. Jesus paid the price. And all you need to do is repent. Put your faith in him. In other words, trade in your life for the life he's offering you tonight. He's offering you a brand new start. He's offering you freedom. He's offering you forgiveness. He's offering you a brand new life, a life without blemish, a life that's wiped away of every sin, a life with no guilt record, a life that's pardoned. You know what it means to be pardoned? That the legal consequences that you owed are all wiped away and you no longer have to pay that price anymore because Jesus paid it for you. So tonight is an opportunity for each and every one of us to make the decision to trade and to give our life and to receive eternal life. Tonight, that's for you. You may feel like that's me. I need to receive that life. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna count to three. And I feel like right now the Holy Spirit is sweeping through this entire room from the front row all the way to the back. And you know, you just felt something right now. That's a conviction and the love of Jesus Christ pulling and tugging at your heart and saying, son, daughter, it's time. I have a new start for you. And I want to give you something brand new. If you're feeling that and you know that's you and you want to receive Jesus Christ into your heart, you want to repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus and give him everything and let him show you who he's called you to be tonight's the night. When I count to three if that's you I want you to raise your hand don't worry about who's next to you right now God has all your attention and you're you're all his attention right now when I count to three one if that's you raise your hand tonight tonight one two three raise your hand you're saying that's me I see your hand 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 I'm proud of you I see your hand I see your hands back there raise your hand you're saying that's me Raise your hand, raise your hand. You say, that's me, I wanna receive Jesus. I wanna receive Jesus. I wanna give him my life. I see your hand right here. Anybody else? I see your hand over here, congratulations. I wanna make one more call. If you raise your hand tonight, will you do us the honors? Will you make your way forward? Tonight, tonight, we're going to get saved and we're going to give our life to Jesus. But I want you to make your way out of your seat. If you're ready to trade in your life, if you're ready to become an ex-drug addict, an ex-drunkard, an ex-homosexual, an ex-lifestyle, an ex-cheater, an ex-adulterer, an ex-whatever, tonight, tonight, trade in your life. Let's give it all to Jesus. Church, let's give them a round of applause as they make their way forward. you if that's you come on up come on up tonight tonight the love of Jesus is calling you tonight
Thank you, Jesus. Everything around me changed. Now, here's what we're going to do. And everyone up here right now, just look at me for a quick second. Everyone that's up here, I want to let you know something. We're so proud of you. We're really proud of you. God loves you so much. He loves you a lot. And I know you felt his love, which is why you're up here tonight. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. He cares for you. I don't know what the past held, but I promise you, your future with Christ is the best life you can ever live. You believe that? You believe it? Everyone up here, we want to help you grow in your walk with Christ. We're not going to leave you hanging. We're not going to have you figure it out on your own. We're going to do what's called discipleship. That word disciple means to train, to teach. We're going to help you. We're going to teach you how to walk in your walk with God. We're going to teach you how to read your word. We're going to teach you how to be a sold out Christian, a holy warrior. The person in front of you, they're going to sign you up for a class and they're going to help you take the next step. And also your next step is to go into holy warriors and also get baptized. Someone say baptized. You know what baptism is? It's like you're going under the water and that's, your, that's symbolic of your grave. You're dying to the old you and you're coming up a brand new person. That's baptism. Your next step is to get baptized and join a class called Holy Warriors. The person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you and they're gonna sign you up tonight, okay? Are we ready? Are we ready to be live out our lives totally for Christ tonight? How many are ready to become an ex, an ex something? Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Repeat after me, say, Jesus, thank you for saving me and for setting me free. I can't do this without you. I need you. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. I repent of my lifestyle. I turn it all in. I give it to you. I receive your life that you have for me. A new beginning begins tonight. Fill me now with your love and with your Holy Spirit. From this day forward, I'll never be the same. I'm walking with you. You're living in me and you're giving me a brand new start. And I pray for healing in my heart, in my mind, and in my spirit. Heal me from all my addictions, my old mindsets, my inner pain. I give it all to you, God. I lay it at your feet. I heal my, even my body. Right now, I give it to you. I give you full control over all of me. My life is in your hands. I am saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Can we give God some praise? How many received that tonight? I got something else. This Friday, men and women, let's show up. Let's be here tonight, 7 o'clock. The men are going to come together like an army and worship God. And women, the women are coming together to worship God. Let's be here to receive a word for the men and the women. Receive a word from God. God's just going to do something great. Let's invite friends and family to Friday. Let's be here Sunday for church. God's going to do some great things. Church, we love you. If you need prayer, come up this way. We'd love to pray with you. Remember this, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. We love you, church. Have a wonderful night. God bless.